Hey guys, welcome to LRTimelapse.com and welcome to a new series of expert tricks that I will show you here on my YouTube channel for LR Timelapse. Those are tricks that I use on a daily basis when working with LR Timelapse and I'm sure that they will be very valuable for you also. So let's start with the first trick. Sometimes you would like to re-edit a sequence that you have done in the past. Maybe there are some new tools in Lightroom that you would like to use or there is a different grading that you would like to apply to an existing sequence. So how to do that? Basically there are two ways to do that. The first one is just to start from scratch, do everything with a clean start. And the second one is just to use the edits that you already have and build up on those. So let's start with the first option. In any case, before re-editing an existing sequence, I'd recommend to save a snapshot of your current edits so that you can come back to them later at any time. The snapshot feature is here on the top right of the table so you can just go on create snapshot then you could take over the name that our time lapse proposes or you can just type in a new name and then you click on ok and this will save the whole set of edits that you already have for later reloading this snapshot via the load manage snapshots feature here i would suggest to remove the sequence from Lightroom if you want to do a complete restart. In Lightroom just right click on the folder and then you click on remove. Don't worry, this won't delete any images. It will just remove the folder from the Lightroom catalog. Back in alert time lapse, you would now do metadata, initialize reset metadata and this will give you a clean start with a fresh set of empty edits. Now you can just do the basic workflow as explained in my instructions and the basic video tutorial. The advantage of that first option is that you will have a really clean start and can build up everything again. But the disadvantage of course is that you will lose anything that you have already done. So the second option we are going to talk about now is the more elegant way to do it you would just build up on the existing edits. And for that, I've just reloaded the sequence here and we would go straight to Lightroom where we have our keyframes already edited. And now we will start re-editing those keyframes. Before starting to re-edit, of course, we should have an idea about what we would like to do. So I'm going to play back my sequence here first with the visual previews activated and have a look on what I could improve. So the first thing that I would like to do is just to get rid of this slightly overcast sky in this area here. And then later in the sequence, this part is getting quite dark at the end. So I would like to light up this a little bit to the end of the sequence. Now that we have a plan, Let's go to Lightroom and start editing. Let's start with the first keyframe. I go to the develop module here and I'd like to use a circular gradient here. That's why I'm opening up this tool. I use one of the predefined gradients. I put it over that area and I'm going to reduce the whites a little bit here and maybe also the highlights just slightly and also to make sure that only the very bright areas here are covered i'm going to add a range mask a luminance range mask where i just remove the dark areas from the filter so this is my range mask it will only affect the very bright areas and now if i pull this away here you can clearly see the difference now I'm going to sync this gradient settings to all keyframes. Just shift select the last keyframe also, and then do scripts 
keyframes gradients only this will just make sure that only the gradients are being synchronized to all keyframes but without killing any of the important LR time-lapse edits like deflicker and holy grail wizard and so on which would happen if you used the regular synchronize feature from Lightroom. Let's continue with the second goal just at the end of the sequence to make this area a little bit brighter here. I'm going to use a linear filter for this. I will use one of the filters that are still without edits here, this one, and I will shift it to the place where I need it. And in this case, I will just use the exposure slider just to make this a little bit brighter and then drag it like this so that I still have a nice constant blue color here in the sky. And now I am going to do the same thing. I will just synchronize the gradients from here to here and again use the sync frames gradients only script and now I can do some fine adjustments to my edits because at the beginning of the sequence this is counterproductive here I would like to have it on that keyframe I will remove it here and I'll remove it from the second keyframe also, but with remove, I mean not delete the filter. You need to have it there and you also need to have it at this position. Um, I will just remove the setting. And on the third one here, I can start to bring the setting in a little bit. And here also just a little bit to make kind of a transition where at the very end we'll have our full extent of our edit and on this keyframe we have a little bit less. Once you've finished re-editing your keyframes of course you need to save the metadata in Lightroom as always you go to grid view and then do metadata save metadata to files and now we go back to LR time lapse. Back in LR time lapse, basically now we follow the second workflow row as explained in all other tutorials and the instructions. So you just reload your XMP data that you just saved in Lightroom and then you apply the auto transition just to connect the new settings of your just re edited keyframes and then you could just let LR time lapse calculate the visual previews for your sequence, which will also then save it. And the big advantage of this second method is, of course, that you will also preserve your deflicker information that already has been calculated. In this case, here we already had a four times refined deflicker, as you can see here. And this is the red curve that you see here. And uh, of course, it's already quite elaborated and the changes that we just did to the editing of the keyframes are not really significant for the deflickering. So we could just work with the same deflicker settings that we already have or just apply one or two additional refinements, which will be, of course, much faster than to deflicker everything again from scratch. Now that the visual preview is finished generating, we can have a look at our result. The left area here where we reduce the brightness, it looks much better now because it's not overcast anymore. And on the right area here, it's also much better because the sky doesn't get so dark anymore and the whole image looks much more balanced than before. You might have noticed some dust spots in the sky. That's something that I would like to deal with in an upcoming video. Today you've learned two methods on how to re-edit your sequence. The first one is the fresh restart where you would remove the sequence from Lightroom and then do metadata initialize in LR time-lapse to just give it a 
clean start. And the second one would just add up on your existing edits, where you basically just leave out the first workflow row in LR time lapse and directly head into Lightroom to re edit your keyframes. You just need to take care to preserve the gradients as usually, do the synchronizing via the sync script. There will be also another video where I will explain the different ways to synchronize and the difference between the sync script and the Lightroom native synchronizing and copy paste and so on. If you consider all the editing rules that you normally apply when working with LR timelapse, you can just re-edit your existing sequences, use some new Lightroom tools and just get very good results. One good reason to re-edit your old sequences could be the new color management introduced in LR Timelapse 5.5 because you would need to re-export your sequences from Lightroom anyway. So that's a good opportunity to just give your keyframes a little bit of a retouching, maybe by adding a range mask, some of the new features in Lightroom, and then also take profit of the better color management in the new version. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, then you will get an instant notification as soon as the next videos will be published. I hope you liked this video. See you soon with the next videos and stay healthy. Bye bye.